Hey guys, welcome to another UDK learning tutorial. Um, I've, I've had a lot of people ask about um, painting uh, texture, painting textures and materials on landscapes in in UDK, and also being able to use the uh, world normals to uh, map out your textures correctly, correctly to uh, slope angles. Well, I'm gonna cover both in this. I'm basically not going to go into detail on how to do it. I'm going to show y'all basically how I did it and how y'all can go in and sort of sort of use what I've done and go through and be able to you know use that. Well anyway, I'm going to go ahead and go open one of my maps I just created recently. Um, this one is done with uh, hand painting on a landscape. I think this is the one with hand painting on a landscape. Nope. This is the one that's actually done with a, a um, with the uh, normal Z. Uh, let me show you the material real quick, um, and I'll bring that up. Let's see. We'll just do it this way. A little easier. Just go in here and find the material this way, and I'll bring it up. Basically, a lot of this is um, you know just copies and paste uh, from the uh, from the uh, from the diffuse to the normals. Sorry if I say um a lot, but that just happens. Let me pull back and I'll just give you a full view of the whole thing real quick. Um, I'll go ahead and kill that for right now. We'll get started here and show you the um, the actual work of the beauty of this thing. Basically, to start out with this and get it to actually uh, derive normal Z, which you see here, um, you'll need to um, get this little set of nodes here going. Um, what this does is it brings it down to a plus one, minus one, or zero to one uh, number brought in. That way, um, the slopes are from zero to one and these two here would be the way you would uh, differ differentiate between the slopes between where you want your textures to come from in the lerp and it comes through the constant clamp and the divide and you bring it up to your lerp here um, I'll go ahead and sort of move that out that way you can see how it's connected and you bring your first material in here now these right here I'm still working on that um, and that's just sort of the way I've got it going right now, but I brought in two different textures with two different terrain chords. Well, actually, they're the same texture with two different terrain chords to sort of give it a, a great blend pattern. And I brought in a um, a, a sand texture, you know, a, or a rocky texture to sort of give the uh, the grass sort of a breakup. Now, one thing I want to say here on the uh, height map. Uh, parameter 2D as you can see it's height map let me go ahead and show you the uh, the properties here um, no I didn't what I wanted all right if you look here uh, the parameter name is height map um, and I've got the description as height map as well you don't really need the description but the parameter height name you want to name it height map that is required also, it doesn't matter which texture you stick in there. It can be any texture at all. Basically, the way this works is is when uh, UDK uh, starts reading the material and sees height map in there, it automatically uh, ignores the texture that's placed inside of it and goes directly to the um, to the landscape normals uh, or the the world normals, as you would call it, and then then from there, uh, the rest of your your material figures. Uh, figures out your um, your slope angles and as you can see whoop, bring it down here you can see that I basically just copied that and pasted it on the normal section here uh, basically everything's the same um, now you are still limited to the 15 textures total on this just as you would be on um, any material you're also um, you also can um, combine this uh, with um, with some with the levels like with, with your terrain weights and your terrain um, terrain weights and terrain chords. You can connect those to those and 
from there you know your terrain rates terrain cords um, you connect it in between those and lerp it in that way too as to come in and maybe get some more textures in but like I said I mean your total texture count cannot be over 15 so you sort of gotta pick and choose what you're gonna do when, when you're doing it now that you've seen that I'm not gonna save any of that uh, you've seen that um, I'll sort of come in and show y'all basically um, this is a 4033 by 4033 terrain it is massive I've been working on I just built this yesterday and on another side note um, for anybody that's interested in building landscapes in UDK you need to use 32-bit um, version of UDK you can build lights all day long in it with the 64-bit you will get a crash every time when you build lights there's no workaround this is the only workaround is to build them in 32-bit now once the lighting is built you can reopen it up into the 64-bit and it, you can play it as long as you don't make any changes anytime you need to build lighting you will have to bring it in the 32-bit which sort of is not very good because 32-bit really takes like 10 times longer to build it I don't know why well actually I do but I'm not gonna go through and explain it now let's move on to our other one we'll move on to landscape to a one now this one here is I think is the one that I hand painted yeah I went in and just built the uh, map as you can see it's all blacked out where I haven't added any mesh any uh hadn't added any materials now all the materials I'm using are all stock I think they're all stock textures um, in UDK but they might not be now I've got three textures here. I've got a uh, brown grass texture, then I've got a rock, uh, a sandy rock texture, and then I've got the uh, other uh, cliff texture used from uh, UDK. Go in and go ahead and show you the uh, show you the material. Now with this one here, you will have to go in and create the layers that are layer layer names like uh, for each layer you will have to have it uh, in the landscape uh, control panel too and they'll have the names will have to match to be able to get everything going um, for those that don't know your terrain cords are what gives you, you the size of your um, gives you the size of your texture in in the map so the um, the smaller this is the smaller number the smaller your textures will be and vice versa the larger the larger they will be you come over let's pull this one up and I'll pull up the properties real quick for you uh, you can see it's named rock and preview weight is a 0.5 reason I use 0.5 if you use one um, on your layer weights you will get a really bright washed out look especially if you're not using a specular or any any other um, any other textures like a normal um, adding the normal in really helps um, I've seen a lot of people saying that they don't they don't really mix well but they do but what you see is is they're only uh, go with the textures with that layer if you don't have your layer set up correctly they will all mix together and look really really jumbled on your uh, landscape as you can see this is a basic setup that's all I've got um, it's just very simple setup come in as you can see um, you know it looks fairly good now what you can do is you come in all right I'm gonna go ahead and pull up the landscape tool um, as you can see I've already got my brushes set up you see I've got three three different ones here set up three different layers you can just go in and pick one layer and let's say I wanted to change some of these uh, let me bring my brush size down some and just hold down control to paint and you can see I can just come in and just sort of just get rid of that you'll just need to bring your strength up some if you want to really get rid of it fast there you go and that's basically the way it works now if I wanted to go back and add the rock back in I can do that come in here and sort of sort of tease the level out a little bit I mean this is all hand painting so if you're if you're a real good artist and you love to do things you know make them look really crisp and clean you can come in and really uh, have a good looking level this hand painted 
Um, you can also come in and add foliage and everything too, but um, the, right now with the way the foliage editor has been acting, I wouldn't advise it. But there you go. Uh, you can see that, you know, it, pretty much the way it works. I mean, it works very simple and easy. And now I've got the uh, the sizes set up where they're really big for. Um, if you come down here, like if you wanted to play it, you can see that the textures are really, really, still really too big. But I did that to keep the uh, tiling down. Because tiling is a big factor in this if you don't get your, uh, if you don't have your uh, textures um, done right to where they don't repeat. And there you go. And that's about it on the uh, texture painting. Now I do have another tutorial up that used the um, TerraSculptor to what it did was it, it built actual random height maps for the um, for the landscape system. It also generate layer weight maps that way you could actually create your layer weights as well. Um, I had a tutorial up about that and how to use it correctly. Um, I still have most of it up. Um, it's um, there's 14 videos actually goes through and sort of teaches how to use it. Most of it's about the materials and how to do that correctly. Um, there's a lot of rambling in there, so you'll have to sort of get over that. That was like one of my first big tutorials. You'll see that as you watch it. The, also, the audio is really, really low on those, and uh, I finally figured out why that was. Uh, we got that corrected. Everything's going good now, and all my new tutorials that I'll be creating will have the audio corrected. We are also adding, uh, going through and adding new um, intros and outros to all our videos. Uh, we are actually branding everything now, which is a good thing. But anyway, back to this. I'm getting sidetracked here. The Terra Sculptor is a beta. It is a free beta. And while it's in beta, you can use anything you create with it in commercial or personal projects, which is a really cool tool if you need to build a landscape fast and you want erosion in it, you want mountains, you want water and whatnot. that tool works awesome. Like I said, it's still in beta, so it has some bugs, so you'll have to get around that. But overall, this tool is really fast at creating landscapes. It's faster than, um, faster than some of the others that I've seen, and it does a lot better job, and it's made specifically for um, before the landscape system. Also, some little tidbits I'll throw out there about the landscape system on height maps. It only imports R16 files. So, anytime you uh, make, if you use te uh, TerraSculptor, make sure you export your map out when you're your height map out when you're done as an R16. Then, after after that, if you go into weight maps, let's say you want to go in and uh, create your weight maps, you can. There's like four to five different ways you can do it. You can do it by slope. You can do it by height. Um, you know, like for snow caps on mountains, you can do it by height and put your snow caps in, and do do two by slope. Uh, one, you know, one for rock, one for grass, and then you're set. You have to export those out as an Unreal GIF, uh, Unreal, uh, Unreal bitmap file. Um, and the exports at the bottom of that screen when you open it up. I don't have I I have it on here and I would show you, but my video is running long, so I will do that next time. I hope y'all enjoyed this. I hope this was sort of informative. Um, if y'all have any questions, just post them in the uh, comments below or uh, on the forums at udklearning.com. Hope to see you there.